Good evening, and welcome to Ask the Unicorn. I'm Ohorazi, your host, and today we have something very, very special for you. This is my sister Charlie. Uh, a lot of you have uh, written in and commented on the fact that I looked rather strange squinting my eyes <laughs> at the camera. So uh, I have Charlie here, and she's my co-host. We've worked together before, and we work very well together. I will let uh, Charlie tell you a little bit about herself uh, after I finish telling you about her. <laughs> Charlie is a very good, very wonderful friend and also a very wonderful actress. She was also an ex-state policeman in Massachusetts. Yes, Massachusetts. And uh, her husband, Jose, who's sitting right over there, <laughs> is still a state policeman and he's going, why did you mention me? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we are expanding the show as you've seen and we're getting used to being live. So hopefully uh, we present a wonderful show even better than the last time. So, Charlie, tell a little bit about yourself. Well, currently I'm hosting the show uh, Diamond in the Rough, mm. Ordinary Woman, that's on Thursday. So we're actually going to be moving to Mondays. Awesome. Yes, Wednesdays we have Steve Nicander, Sir Drop a Lot, his amazing story of weight loss he lost. He went from 600 pounds to 220. Wow. Holistically, organically, instead of having the bypass surgery. So he's on Wednesday nights from 8 to 9, and you'll be listening to us on the Diamond in the Rough Mondays from 8 to 9 as well. That's awesome. Uh, which uh, brings me to a point. Uh, this is not just a special occasion here. This will be a regular occasion. Charlie will be co-hosting the show with me as uh, I've been waiting to get her to do this for quite some time. Yes. Now, um, without further ado, uh, I know we have uh, youngsters listening, so uh, what I'd like to do is address the questions from them so that I don't keep them up very, very late. So, uh, Charlie... Okay, the first question coming in is, can you please explain the phrase, where your thoughts go, your energy flows? Uh, well, um, remember, we are psionic beings. And because we're psionic beings, what that means is that we all think a lot. And there, although everything is energy, no matter what it is, your thoughts have to direct it. So if your thoughts are negative, things will go towards the negative. If your thoughts are positive, your energy will go towards the positive. Let's say that there's a project that you've been working on for quite some time. And uh, you've been thinking a lot about it, so your thoughts will go towards that project. However, uh, if you happen to allow something else in, some other kind of thought that tells you you can't, com you can't complete it or there's always something wrong, that's exactly where the energy that you've been allotted by the universe will go. Everything that you do will be influenced by what it is that you're thinking. The energy around you, things you'll have little calamities or you'll have things to come up missing or mm -hmm. or maybe you just don't have enough money to complete your project. This is why it's so important for you to keep positive thoughts on things that you're trying to do and trying to accomplish in your life. It is really, really important. So where your thoughts go, your energy flows. And remember, the universe has supplied us all with an, a vast amount of energy. So it's best for you to keep your thoughts positive on whatever it is that you're doing or who you're around. That way the energy will support your thoughts. Now, going on that, uh, does that also include the people you surround yourself with? That is absolutely correct. You must surround yourself with people that are of a positive influence mm -hmm. or people that are of like mind. Remember, even a great scientist said that members of the same family are seldom found under the same roof. Mm -hmm. Now, that doesn't mean that, you know, your sister or brother that you're born with is not really your sister <laughs> or brother. What that means is that there are people that are of like mind that are going to help you grow and evolve and help your projects or anything else that you are doing grow and evolve. Mm -hmm. Therefore, you can consider them part of your group. Now I have a question going on the phase when you're considering the fact that you want to maintain positive energy and positive thoughts. Mm -hmm. How do you deal when you're in a situation you can't control and there's a negative person there that drains your energies? What are ways for you to deal with that? You know, one of the best ways to deal with that is to have a discussion with that person mm -hmm. and even let them know that you know they're being very negative and it's draining and you don't want to be a part of it now if you're talking about a situation where the both of you are locked in a room and neither one of you can get out <laughs> yeah. what you do is you just go to neutral corners <laughs> right. and hope that everything works out but there's always a way no matter what there's always some type of way that you can communicate with this person mm -hmm. and say look if you're going to be that way I don't want anything to do with you or if that person is very positive, that's what you want to be around. You say, hey, I think we, we do go well together. Right. But you can. There's always a choice no matter what. Okay. Uh, I know that some of the choices can be extremely difficult. Mm -hmm. They can be very, very hard. But um, 
there is always an opportunity for you to distance yourself from that negativity, depending on whether or not that person uh, wants to change. If they don't want to change, then why be around them? There's no excuse to be around them. I don't. I really don't care, not unless you're Siamese twins mm -hmm. <laughs> or something right. like that. But right. you can always make the choice to get away from that person. Very true. Or at least say, look, that's fine. We have to exist together, but why don't you exist over there? <laughs> and I'll exist over here, and we'll be fine. Great. Okay. Uh, the other question we have is, can a person use their affinity for one element to learn about the others? Of course. Remember, all of the elements are connected, no matter what they are. And remember, we need them all to live, mm -hmm. so there's no way to separate them. So if you're dealing with air, you'll also deal with earth, fire, water, electricity, no matter mm -hmm. what. Um, what you want to be careful of doing is thinking that just because you have a predilection for one energy, that you can't master the other energy. That's what you want to be really, really careful of. Because remember, these energies are very, these elements are very sentient, and they do pay attention. Mm -hmm. If you're, you know, every chance you get destroying plants and trees, you can't very well expect Earth to help you out with anything, <laughs> you know. But by the same token, if you're destroying one element, the other elements will respond in kind. Mm -hmm. And this is just the universal uh, truth, no matter what we say, no matter what we think about it. It's kind of like if you are constantly screwing around with fire, you can't very well expect expect water to bail you out if you get burned, right? Right. Because you'd be amazed at how uh, these things work. Sometimes water will elude you. Mm -hmm. and, you know, you'll need water, but because you desecrated the earth, it doesn't rain. Now, how can people find out more about the fact with what element they're in tune to or what element they're prevalent that's prevalent mm -hmm. to them? That's very, very simple. Think about, of all of the elements, all of the basic elements, earth, water, fire, air, and um, electricity, think about which one you've always been surrounded by, which one you always have had this knack for being drawn to. Uh, you know, it's been said the kids love water, mm -hmm. but not all the time. Right. Some kids love the earth, some uh, children. I know one boy that's a fantastic herbalist, he's just young right now. Mm -hmm. um, there are some that have this predilection for fire, this little girl, Bella, that. Um, <laughs> I had candles lit on the table and she just sat there staring at them. <laughs> and uh, I looked at her and I said, Bella. And she, her eyes got bigger and I went, okay, let's move the candles away from the pyro. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> you know, but uh, she has a predilection for fire. Mm -hmm. What she should do is find ways to honor that element. Mm -hmm. Just pick one, anyone, find one. You'll wind up mastering them all if you give show them reverence. Pick any one of them. Get some water, put it in a bowl. Put your hands in the water. Test the different temperatures. One bowl of hot water, one bowl of cold water. And then switch your hands. Find ways to use water in productive uh, ways. Or find ways to show the reverence of fire. Or even earth. Have a little Zen garden, which is what the Japanese did really, really well and still do to this mm -hmm. day very, very well and uh, they prosper. You know, you, if you like electricity, find things that are going to allow electricity to be. That doesn't mean, you know, turn on a thousand lights in your home. It means find something that will symbolize your relationship with uh, electricity or any of the elements. Don't forget them. You don't like being forgot, mm. particularly wind. Yeah. <laughs> Find something that you're going to honor wind with. Uh, for instance, I taught people how to make kites. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was the most beautiful thing ever uh, uh, to see someone fly a kite for the very first time. That's, you know, been pretty much an adult, almost an adult. Now, I'm speaking about my daughter, Kazi. Mm -hmm. um, she got to fly, fly a kite for the very first time, and it was really cool to watch, you know. Mm -hmm. Uh, sometimes we go through and no one teaches us how to do certain things until a certain age. Right. And um, I built her a kite. We built it together. And uh, it's huge. Mm -hmm. And she got to fly it and I couldn't believe the smile that was on her face. But she was honoring the wind. And to this day, it doesn't matter how cold it is, if there's a wind, she'll go outside. You know, mm -hmm. And it's really cool to watch. And the wind honors her as well. That's excellent. Yeah. 
The next question is, when a country goes to war, are the individual citizens karmatically responsible for it? No, absolutely not. Absolutely not. Mm -hmm. Remember, karma is a collective. Mm -hmm. Karma is one of those things that you really can't put a barrier on, but you can't blame one person for the acts of another. Not unless that person could do something to stop it. And unfortunately, the way that many governments are, are formed, you really don't have a choice. Mm -hmm. uh, if there is a, a militia in your country, which there is in every country, and they decide that you're going to serve, you're going to serve. It's unfortunate that we have uh, things such as war. It's unfortunate that we have things such as famine or, right. or anything else. But you can't blame the whole country for one person's act. Otherwise, we'd all be doomed. Mm -hmm. Very true. Yeah, so absolutely not. Uh, you can't be blamed for someone else. Now, the other question kind of goes off that it says, now that the U.S. has left Iraq, what can individuals do to help heal the damage caused by that war? Get rid of racism in every single form. Get rid of violence in every form that you possibly can. Find ways to stand up against those things that would cause such a, a, uh, an act, those things that would cause such an atrocity. You know, whatever those people did over there is what they did over there. Whatever we've done here is what we've done here. Remember, we call them the bad guys, but you know what? They look at us and call us the bad guys as well, and you have to remember that. Mm -hmm. You know, if we're, there can't be a war if nobody participates. But now that we've left, take care of those people that went there to fight. You know, you have to take care of those people that have gone there, that mm -hmm. have suffered, and then find ways to show them honor and let them know, look, we understand. You know, we may not have been there, but this is home. And you know something? When you meet someone who is from Iraq, don't just assume that they're a terrorist. That's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. Mm -hmm. You know, don't just assume that they're the bad guy. Talk to them. Find out how they felt about it. And you'll find that 90% of the people really did not want to participate in that. You know, 90% of the people had no idea what was really going on. All they knew is that right. they were being shot at. Mm -hmm. You know, so uh, we need to get rid of those things. If there's no war, don't find ways to make a war. Just get rid of it. Find ways to make peace. Honor them. Find out what their culture is about. Find out what their, their art is about. Find out what our, our art is about. You know, most people don't even know that the, the intelligence of every nation and culture has never been defined by science or war. It's been defined by their art, right. their culture, their food, and their music, mm -hmm. their ceremony. That's true. You know, so how about we get to that particular part, and I, I don't really care who has a bigger gun. I, I'm not interested in that, and nor should you be interested in that. Mm -hmm. So when you meet someone, honor their custom. Yeah. We like to say things, uh, and I've heard people say this, it's truly ignorant, you know. Uh, God's name is Jehovah. Or, <laughs> we don't know about that Allah. Well, guess what? They're talking about the same God. <laughs> the exact same God. Do you understand? Same God. Mm -hmm. That means Jehovah. Allah, El Shaddai, Elohim, Ahura Mazda. It doesn't matter. God is God. And uh, seriously, God does not limit himself by our racial bias. Mm, very true. Uh, we have a question here from Ninja Lin. She said, I had a remarkable encounter with Jesus and, and I'm changed. It happened during a seizure and I raised up out of my body and met him as we floated above my body. It was wonderful. Um, before this, you said I should be doing angelic work. Care to elaborate? Yeah, on a per you're talking about on a personal basis. As I said, uh, you're, if you're going to ask a personal question, then I'll answer you personally at another time. Uh, this particular form is so that everyone will be able to benefit. Angelic work is very simple. It's your job to learn how to communicate with the angels and then uh, use that communication to enhance your life and the lives of others. You know, you had a very personal experience with Jesus. That's awesome. So did I. And so did a lot of other people. Mm -hmm. You know, that's for you personally. It's not something that anybody can tell you about. You're asking me for advice, but you spoke to Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> and Jesus is my role model as well. 
you know, and if he came and he decided to tell me something, I wouldn't ask anybody's advice. It's very simple. When any of them speak to you that are in the positive end of the universe, they not only give the advice, they give the way to do it. Do you understand? <clears throat> it's kind of like being a telepath. I not only can see the problem, but the solution comes along with it. Remember, there are no greater beings than those that bear the title of Christ. Remember that. And those that bear the title of angel are equal. They're just different job titles. So going on that note, it's very prevalent, the belief now that prophets don't exist, that Jesus or God, actually God himself doesn't speak to any human anymore. That was something for back in the day in the Bibles. Hmm. So in theory, you're saying that we are still being spoken to. It's a matter of are we listening and are we acting on it? I never speak in theory. Mm -hmm. There's at least one person that you know that God talks to. Right. And you're sitting right next to him. Mm -hmm. That means that God talks to you as exactly. well. Exactly. Those people that decided to make up those funny little philosophies are people who only wanted to make God, heaven, Jesus, angels. Things that will be salvation to people exclusive. Mm -hmm. They wanted to be able to market it. And they're still marketing it. <clears throat> you know, the truth is is that God is not exclusive. Never has been, never will be. Jesus is not exclusive. Never has been, never will be. And if you really think about it, how can you call heaven exclusive to anybody? I know we have all these different religions, and that's great, and you know, I'm, I'm all for that. Everyone has a different method of, you know, how they communicate with uh, heaven, right. and it's good. But it shouldn't be like a contest. Um, you shouldn't have it like a, a, well, this particular theory says that God doesn't <laughs> exist. Right. I could care less. I, I'm not interested in theories. Theories don't mean a thing to me. Mm -hmm. You know, when I sit and I speak with someone and I tell them a message has been delivered uh, to me and uh, it helps their life, that is my proof right there. Right. You know, and if they do something, if they, if I'm able to at least reach them on any level, I have proven my case, okay? I don't have to, like I say, guess what's in a person's pocket in a little envelope, <laughs> or, um, you know, well, prove to me that you're psychic. No, that's stupid, that's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Why well, prove to people what the color blue looks like if they have no eyes, and I've always said that. Right. You know, it's very, very simple. God is not limited by existence or non-existence. We humans think of things like something exists or something doesn't exist because something didn't go our way. That's the bottom line. You didn't get something that you wanted, therefore God's the guilty party. But God's not the one who wrote that check in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, you know, you have to think about God must be sitting up there going, what did I write today? Well, adding on that note, it says here... Um before that, okay, it says, in some of your videos you mentioned that you believe in Jesus. Ah, uh -huh. stop. Mm -hmm. I never said that. <laughs> that is absolute untruth. I never said I believed in Jesus. I said I know Jesus. There's a difference. Mm -hmm. Okay? Belief is for people that don't know. Belief is for those people that would say the very thing, like God doesn't exist theoretically. Well, I have never said that. I've always said that I know that God exists and I know that Jesus is real. Well, going on that, it says, the same person says, I have a slight hunch that perhaps you base your belief from personal experience. Again. <laughs> I do not believe in Jesus. That would be like saying, I believe in Charlie. <laughs> I know Jesus. I know Charlie. It's that simple. Mm -hmm. Now, it's, oh. How do I know that? This is my right hand. I'm wiggling the fingers on my right hand. <laughs> do I need to look at it to know it's there? Although, I do have a personal experience. Mm -hmm. That is between me and Jesus. Well, I guess you're being um, hit on that. Another person says, why do you believe in Jesus? And what do you see him as a Messiah, King over the cosmos, or one and only Son of God, or maybe all of the above? Obviously, I'm dealing with a lot of people that are not paying attention. <laughs> Seriously. Sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. You know, I do not. 
believe in Jesus. I know that Jesus is, was, and ever shall be. Mm -hmm. Is that fairly clear, at least? <laughs> now, uh, my comments may seem a little asinine, uh -huh. and if they do seem asinine, it's probably because you're not paying attention. <laughs> so you have to pay attention or he's going to come at you. Uh, another question we have is, how do you know if you're an angel on this earth or part angel? Now, that's a good question. Mm -hmm. You'll know. There's some things there is no how-to. They're just, they just are. And to tell you the truth, it's like most things. It's kind of like being a telepath. You don't really think about it. I, didn't, I don't think about it. It's just the way that it is. Um, I believed that everyone was like this. Everyone could see. You find out that everyone cannot. Now, uh, at one point in time, if I decide to spring wings and fly up in the air and mm -hmm. have a more thunderous voice than I do, that has nothing to do with me. Mm -hmm. But I know what I am. I know what is and cannot be shaken on them, any of them. God is. Jesus is. The angels are. And guess what? It's all part of the dance that I'm, I've been invited to. And I'll invite you as well. Even Jesus himself is not someone's personal Lord and Savior. Jesus is Jesus. Mm -hmm. And if you want to dance, dance. Not exclusive. Again, my personal experience really doesn't matter. What's yours? That's a good question. The other question we have is, I know that you do not like to display your certifications on your wall, but would you mind listing your different, your different talents? <laughs> um, you got a while? <laughs> yeah. Actually, I would. Let's just call myself a servant. I serve the universe in whatever capacity the universe asks me. Yes, I can do a lot of things. There's nothing I cannot do. Name it, I can do it. You asked me to create a spaceship, given the time and the resources, yes, I could. I could build you a futuristic car that should have already been invented. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what the Jetsons said. Yeah, right, exactly. You know, uh, I do anything that involves art, anything, anything and could do it well, not just kind of. Um, I do nothing better than I serve. I now, help people. Going on that note, some people might look at you and say, well, you're different, you're gifted, or whatever. I <laughs> am. <laughs> no. Yeah, he really is. But isn't there a way that if we really wanted to put ourselves in tune with, quote unquote, the universe, or our talents that we could develop? Of course. Talents that we don't even know we have? Of course. Remember, we are all one. We may look different from each other, but this is a universe. You know, universe, one, one verse. Um, that means that we're all existent upon each other. That means that we can all develop ourselves. It's whether or not you choose to. There are those who choose to develop themselves in evil. At least they're developing. Mm -hmm. You know, there are those who choose to develop themselves in good. They're developing. No one doesn't have an ability I've listened to people countless times say, well, you know, I, I don't have the ability to do anything. And then I've shown them what they can do, and they go, wow, I didn't even know I could do that. Mm -hmm. As you didn't try. You know, this old saying I, I heard a long time ago is what motivated me. Mm -hmm. I heard this when I was a child. And it said, the statement was, a man who never had a chance, never took a chance. That's really deep. I thought so. I was like, yeah. wow. That's, and it's the truth. Mm -hmm. How do you know if you can do something? I mean, really. There, I've listened to people say that they really wanted to sing. Well, you can, there are voice lessons you can take. You may not, you know, sing super well, but at least you can sing. And if you keep doing, maybe you can sing super well. Look at all the people that have record contracts that can't sing. <laughs> <laughs> so there's hope for me yet. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, really, you told your boy if he didn't. <laughs> I'm sorry. That'll 
be another day for another show. Oh, man. Well, yeah. we have another question. It says, when sure. doing spell work, do you personally mix traditions, a.k.a. rituals, languages, symbols, prayers, invocations, deities, powers, goddesses, gods, etc.? If you do not, do you see a problem with it? I do not see a problem with it, and I do. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I'm very fond of the goddess. Very, very fond. And so far, she's still fond of me. I'm really glad. <laughs> <laughs> I screw up, <laughs> you know, but uh, I know, listen, if you can find a way to develop, then do so, really, seriously, do so. Nothing could please God and Goddess more than a person who is willing to learn and to try different things and to bring them all together to enhance their lives, mm -hmm. you know, so long as you're not hurting people. Yeah. For someone that, let's say, never had the opportunity or has low self-esteem or whatever, what are some of, uh, like, a small step that they can take and say, okay, maybe I can draw, maybe I can write, maybe I can paint, maybe I can sing, or maybe I can act. Well, what would you suggest would be a way for them to get in tune and figure out how they can get the courage to maybe figure out what their talents are? Talk to people. Don't ask them whether or not it's okay. Think of something that you really want to do and try at the level that you are. Just just try it. You don't have to like be Cecil B. DeMille, who happens to be one of my uh, role models, but um, try anything. And then surround yourself by people who are also doing something to develop themselves. Remember, if you surround yourself, if you're a water drop, the best thing for you to do is surround yourself by water. Mm -hmm. <laughs> those people that are also looking to develop themselves you will be strong and then stop looking for everyone's approval someone's always going to disagree it doesn't matter you can do a magnificent work and someone will come up and say well you know that one little granule on the side is <laughs> not exactly you know what you know it should be and then you turn to that person and you say can you do better mm-hmm and you know what? Oh, no, I, I don't do that. You know, I, I can't do that. That's not my thing. You know, what you have to be willing to do is step out. It's kind of like this. You see this little cactus right here? <laughs> this is Kazi's cactus, you know, and uh, she's really good with this stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, I me, mean, I just want to eat it because it looks like it should be eaten. <laughs> but, you know, she's really good with this. I have never had to teach her one thing about cacti. Mm -hmm. Not one single thing. Mm -hmm. But if you asked her like years ago, can you go practice? She would look and say, I don't know. Right. You know, but today uh, she loves cactus and she can do anything with it. That's very true. Okay, we have another question from Siren Storm. She says, or he says, what does it mean when a lot of people acknowledge that you're a person of a lot of positive power? Is that... Uh, is that you, you're just positive or deeper than that? It means that you're supposed to keep being positive and not settle on the fact that you're positive. And the other thing she says too is, and if so, how do I know the difference? Well, if you're stopping to think about how positive you are, <laughs> you're defeating yourself. However, if people notice it and they, they comment on it, you simply say, well, thank you, I try to be, and then keep going. Keep going. Stay positive. Tell that person, well, be positive with me. Keep going. Don't stop. Just because someone says, hey, you know, you reach the top of that mountain. You know, you're, you're pretty good at climbing mountains. Don't say stop and go, yeah, ah. <laughs> I am not that. You know? And then just sit there, and sit there and go, I don't think I'll climb any more mountains. I've already proven I can. You know? <laughs> Keep going. Find the next mountain. Be more positive. Don't be naive. Positive. Okay? So you think that someone is positive, are you able to admit that energy to other people, even if you don't actually say something, just by your way of being? Mm-hmm. So that's why even, that. Uh, for that person that uh, is asking about Jesus, even he himself says, and I'm paraphrasing, that you will know those people of God by their works. Not by what they say. Mm -hmm. You can sit on the corner and 
thump people with Bibles all day <laughs> and means absolutely nothing. But if you're doing the work of Christ, you're doing those things that are meant to be done. If you're the one with the muscle and you're pushing the car out of the road, that's what really matters. Right. You know that when you're doing it. But again, don't concentrate on whether or not you're being positive. Just be positive and everybody will benefit. That's awesome. Um, also, we have another question. Any comments on spirit guides and the difference between them and angels? Not much. Mm -hmm. um, spirit guides are spirit guides. They are there to help you, provided they really are guides and not spirit hindrances. You will have to determine that. How can you tell the difference? Well, a spirit guide will even offer healthy criticism so long as it comes to a, a justified uh, end. Mm -hmm. If you're getting something that's constantly telling you, you know, like you're foul and this and that and that and just bad things, that's not a spirit guide, that's hindrance. If you're getting something that is going to enable you, in other words, uh, make it so that you really don't have to try, that's not a spirit guide, that's a hindrance. Remember, mm -hmm. many times something could enable you and it winds up disabling you. True. Okay? You have to get something that's going to be willing to work with you. Mm -hmm. Okay? That will give you the answer that you need and then help you uh, complete a task. You know, it's great. Angels are there, so if there's something you can't handle, they'll handle it. But then they'll also turn and tell you, don't do this. Mm -hmm. Okay? And they won't say, uh, you know, I really hate to tell you this, but you really shouldn't do that. You know what they'll do is say, don't do this. This is what got you there. Don't do it again. And then they move on, provided that you don't need another lesson. Now, I can give you guys something here. The universe speaks in three ways. One is a whisper. Mm -hmm. Okay. One is a good, healthy conversation. Mm -hmm. You know, you, okay, this is what you did wrong. Now let's make sure that we don't do that again. Okay. Right. Uh, you see that doorway over there? That's hell. <laughs> yes. Stay away from there. Go this way, okay? Go to the one that says, you know, healthy life, heaven. Not this one. Got it? Mm -hmm. The other is a universal kick in the butt. Something happens that you really don't need to happen. And it's like they turn and say, you hear me? Can you hear me now? <laughs> right. Good. <laughs> you know, and hopefully we do. So when we're talking about these spirit guides or angels... Are we only talking about actual spirits, or can it be in the form of a person coming our way? Remember, a person is a spirit as well. Mm -hmm. Spirit, disembodied, spirit, embodied. If mm -hmm. you can't listen to the spirit that's embodied, how do you hope to listen to the spirit that is not? Seriously. Mm -hmm. You know, people look at pictures of Jesus all day long, and they say whatever they want. Mm -hmm. You know why? Right. It doesn't answer. <laughs> it, doesn't, it doesn't say anything back. It doesn't say... Charlie, <laughs> this is Jesus. Right. You know, it doesn't do that. So you can make up all kinds of stuff. Mm -hmm. But imagine if Jesus actually walked through your door in a physical form, the real, bona fide Jesus. Mm -hmm. You know what you do? You call the police more times than not. Mm -hmm. You know, or you do something else really stupid. Think like about pass it. Pass out. <laughs> pass out. Scream. Oh my God, it's the rapture. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> you know? You really have to think about these things, right. you know, and unfortunately, we have, as a society, caused ourselves to be very spiritually inept, mm -hmm. even to ourselves, never mind all the other stuff. We've had the rapture three different times, four, and it didn't even happen. No, it hasn't. You know, we've had ten, nine, 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 ten, ten, ten and the last one, eleven, eleven, eleven. Mm -hmm. And, you know, all we did was celebrate one of my students' birthday that was on 11-11, you know, mm -hmm. and it was fun. But uh, no cataclysm, no, no shattering change of anything other than, okay, this is another time that half of humanity got duped. Pretty much. You know, and what's next? Oh, yes. 12-21. 2012. <laughs> In a world... People wait around for a cataclysm. 
you know, think about it just for a second. Don't you think that the universe meant more for us than to stand around or sit around on our knees and wait for someone to save us? How about we do some saving of our own? It would help. And then, when Jesus does come, you can say, this is what I've been doing. This is what I'm doing now. And perhaps Jesus might look and say, awesome. <laughs> That's cool. That does make a lot of sense. Yeah. Um, we have another question here. It says, um, in, is God and goddesses the same as who people call God? Why do we say God and goddess? It's uh, misnames. We like to identify with uh, masculine, feminine, male, female, uh, goddess, god. Um, there would be a better word to call them. You know, we identify with mother and father, and unfortunately that particular thing goes god, goddess, uh, mother, father. Uh, and it would be far better to just call them whatever you want to call them. But you know something? At least call them by name. You know, if you can think of a name to call them, at least call them by name. Say something. Don't talk at them all the time. God. It's <laughs> yeah. not God's. That's not. That's not God's name. That's what God is. Do mm -hmm. you understand? God is. That's, again, that's what she is. Not her name. It'd be like her looking at you and saying, "Human." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, or go to a restaurant and say, "Waitress," and they say, "Customer." <laughs> Yeah, yeah, very true. I, I think that even they, God and Goddess both, have to sit and go, when did we stop being friends? Right. <laughs> Seriously. I found that most people really don't like them. Mm -hmm. We use them in order to make war. Those are the other guys, just right. in case no one can figure this out. Mm -hmm. Benevolent God and Goddess. Don't cause war. And don't use war as an excuse to make peace. They're benevolent. That's why we're living. You have to remember that. When it comes to terms such as God and Goddess, we humans lack the capability and understanding to call them by something else other than a name. So pick a name. I happen to like Athena. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> really? <laughs> I think Athena's awesome. <laughs> mm -hmm. And like I said, if God was Alanis Morissette, I'd be all right with that. <laughs> Seriously. You know, so uh, pick a name that works for you, but talk to them, not ask them. And no, you don't have to go through someone else in order to talk to God. <sighs> no, you do not. So you can basically have an intimate conversation, like if you were talking to a friend or a brother. Yeah. We have conversations. Yes. What was it? And God made man in his image. Mm -hmm. If that's so, then I can have a conversation with God. Absolutely. Oh, by the way, for those of you that are strict Bible readers, take a look and reread Genesis. You'll find in there where it says, Male and female created he them, and blessed them, and called their name Adam. Not his. Thanks. <laughs> thought I'd say that. Okay. Uh, the next question we have. I had a Komodo dragon in my dream, a really big one. He was not mean to me. He had mud on him and went to attack someone who had hurt me in the past. Is a dragon a spirit guide for me now? That particular type of dragon is a protector. Do you understand? It's not a spirit guide. It performed a function, and that function was to uh, get back at someone. But remember, it could have been something that you yourself formed. Because to get back at someone is never really the way, is it? All it does is create something else. But uh, if it helps you, and you look at that as a protector, I'm all for that. You can never have too much protection. And that's a pretty formidable form of protection, you know, so that's great. It's not a spirit guide. Look at it more like a assistant or helper or even a totem, if you will. Either way, it's a good thing. Just uh, get rid of the getting back at someone. 
So what's the difference, though, if you're talking about a totem or an assistant as opposed to a spirit guide? A guide would actually guide you to something. Mm -hmm. Okay? And that's the whole premise, guide, mm -hmm. which means it's taking you someplace. Okay. An assistant would help you to learn something. Mm -hmm. Okay? A, she's talking about something that uh, defended her mm -hmm. or protected her. Right. Okay? That's a protector. It's a guardian. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and guardian angels don't always look pretty. In fact, nine times out of ten, they're pretty rugged looking. Remember, they fight things. Mm -hmm. And I doubt seriously they all say, Well, go away, beast. <laughs> but yeah. I am an angel. And I say, go the away. You know? <laughs> no, it's more like getting down and dirty. That's like right. Fighting. That's right. Very true. They fight. Okay, there's another question. It says, how can an astrologer see a person's future life encounters through their chart? Is the principle similar to charting a planet's course through space? Similar. In fact, astrology and astronomy, astronomy, astronomy <laughs> were both the same at one point. Remember, uh, astrology would better be called star logic, or the movement and the logistics of the stars and celestial bodies and so forth. Now, each one of us has is influenced by these movements. So your astrology chart is kind of like a map to yourself. A person can tell every single thing about you, if they're experienced and know what they're doing, that has ever happened to you and ever will happen to you in this lifetime, and in many cases in other lifetimes. It's very, very detailed and very, very specific, excuse me. It uh, shows down to the second or even half second what events are coming, what is taking place right now, and what could. Uh, it is very, very precise. It's based on mathematics, which is fortunate. And whether or not you did great in math in school has absolutely nothing to do with it. Mm -hmm. It has to do with what you can do now. And the way that astrology is set up is in degrees and decades, uh, months, days, years, uh, score, eons, millennia. And this is how an experienced astrologer can do that. They can look at your chart and go, okay, this is why you do this. This is why you do that. If you do this, this is what will happen. Mm -hmm. If you don't do this, then we can eradicate that, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And you're looking at them going, I can tell that from a bunch of lines. Well, each of those lines mean something. They are influenced. These are the planets that are in our solar system, and our solar system alone influence you, even down to a, a particle level. And you really have to understand that. Um, when I heard this one scientist, bless you, this one scientist that said, well, you know, <clears throat> we're declaring Pluto no longer a planet. The only thing I had for him was moron. <laughs> Seriously. How can you take something that has influenced people over billions of years and decide because you're Mr. Grandiose, I'm going to declare Pluto is no longer a planet because it's too small. Right. That's ridiculous. Astrology-wise, that never matters, and it never will matter. Remember, these are things that are tried and true. And uh, to the other person that decided that they would make up a new form of astrology, uh, you got about a thousand years. So come back in a thousand years. <laughs> I will sit down with you, and then you can tell me, well, I've made this new form of astrology. And I'll go, well, that's great. So basically, you, do you think that this is one of the things people talk about where you have the chart, your astrological chart, and it tells you what your future is or your uh, coming destiny? Hmm. Is it something that's etched in stone or is it something you can change or is it more of a this is what could happen? All it is is a structure. Mm -hmm. Okay. Listen, no one can tell you what the future is. They can tell you the possibility and what energy um, fills that possibility more to a degree of tangibility. For a person to say, well, yes, I can tell the future, that's ridiculous because the future can change. The moment that he said, I can tell the future, it could have changed. Right. You know, remember, the future is formless, just like the past is. Mm -hmm. They're both the same. They're not here. The person would do better to concentrate on now. Now, even when I do readings, I can tell a person, look, uh, if you keep on this track, this is what's going to happen. Why? It brings us back full circle mm -hmm. to where your thoughts go is where your energy will flow. Very true. I hadn't thought about it that okay. way. However, if I told you go outside of your home, take seven paces forward, turn right, go three paces, spin around three times, mm -hmm. 
and a million dollars will fall right in front of you. <laughs> okay? And don't don't do that. I'm only making an example. <laughs> There's like 300 people now doing that to get that million dollars. Okay! <laughs> yeah, no, um, well, Z said. What you do is you... Uh, now, you have to take into consideration that I've told you to do that. You didn't even ask me when. If I say go do it now. That means okay. now. Mm -hmm. But if I say do it now and you go, what? That now is gone. Exactly. You know, it's past. Or if you go out and you do all of that stuff and then you... Someone passes by while you're doing it and says, hi. I didn't tell you to say hi. <laughs> <It's> the... <laughs> you know what I mean? I didn't. No. I told you what to do. Don't blame me. The million dollars didn't fall in front of you and it fell down the street in front of this other guy. <laughs> it's because you didn't listen. You know, there are certain things to the future. You, the future is so... Precise? Sometimes? No, you know, it's precise, but it's unformed. Mm -hmm. There's precision in chaos. Remember that. Chaos has its place, but even to chaos, there's an order. You know, so no one can really tell the future. What they can tell you is a possibility. It's like watching a bunch of television screens, and five or six of them turn off. There's only so many left. Mm -hmm. And then there's only one or two left, and then there's only one. And you go, that one. Right. And that's exactly what it's like. That makes sense. So I pick that one. I just do it very quickly for people. Mm -hmm. You know. I had a whole class figuring out numbers and I just figured them all out and said this and they, how'd you do that? Practice. Right. I've done this all my life. Mm -hmm. You know, so <clears throat> everybody has that opportunity. But remember, the future and the past are exactly the same. They're not here. Very true. So, the next question he has is this, what does it mean when you dream of gold bars? Hey, you want money? <laughs> <laughs> That's I like simple. money. <laughs> I like money. <laughs> and it also could mean prosperity is waiting for you. And uh, I do wish that for you, whoever said that. Excellent. The other question is, there has been a lot of talk about evil musicians involved in Ma Mason, Ma excuse me, Manson stuff promoting evil. Ministers have been saying that metaphysics is evil. What would one say to this confusion? I know there's good mm. and bad to everything. Okay, ministers have said... Metaphysics is evil. What do they think Jesus is? Really? Mm -hmm. Metaphysics is evil. So is Jesus, angels, all those good things that they're promoting. It didn't make any sense for them to say such a thing. There are evil magi uh, musicians and magicians. I face them all the time on Skyrim. But <laughs> there, are, <laughs> there are evil musicians. But there are good musicians as well. But those people that are in the churches that are accusing everybody of being evil simply because they choose to explore their lives are the very ones that you should watch out for. Mm -hmm. And I will challenge any of them. If someone likes a form of music, that does not make them evil. And God does not use fear. So, which is, which is true, because I know that I remember back in the 60s, people were always saying how Elvis Presley was evil, and it was the devil's music, and rock and roll was the decline of the youth, yet then you have the 70s with the rock, and then rap, of course, was the demise of youth, so. Hmm. It's all a matter it's of perception. always something. Yeah, it's always something that's being used. Now, do you think that's really because it's based in the fact that they really do believe that it's evil, or if it's just a... A thing that they use to maintain control because they think the youth are breaking mm -hmm. away from the old beliefs. Not only that, it's for people that aren't capable of doing something. Mm -hmm. They usually label something as bad, such as, um, you know, all that that rhythm music is evil. <laughs> Why? Because you can't dance. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know. I mean, even Mr. Presley couldn't dance a lick, but at least he tried. <laughs> <Very> <laughs> you true. know. <laughs> I mean, you can't sit up and call something evil just because you don't like it, except for mayonnaise. Oh, here we go with the mayonnaise. On that <laughs> note, we'll go to the next question. Um, you said in your re recent radio interview that using a Ouija board is a contract. What do you think about using a pendulum? Is it also the same thing as a contract? No, it's not. It's not the same. A pendulum is a divination tool. It's something that you're left to draw your own conclusions with. A Ouija board is not. Those are two entirely different tools. Now, could you explain a little bit more for people that don't understand what do you mean by a contract? Hmm. Uh, I've gone over this at length. 
But uh, remember, the Ouija board is drawn up in words, numbers, day, night, yes, no. On your end, because we understand words, uh, words are spelled out. As I said, you think that some you're talking to your your dead grandmother, and uh, you're talking to another spirit that may be posing as your dead grandmother, mm -hmm. and um, because they can read your minds. Because remember, again, where your thoughts go, your energy flows. They read energy, and they tell you what you want to hear. On the other end, because they're spelling out all these words, because we're kind of dumb, uh, they have asked you for something entirely different. Now, the universal principle says that for everything that is given, something must be given in return. Right. You don't know what to return them. They're interested in energy, mm -hmm. not your words. Right. You know, you can't really give them information. Mm-hmm. You know, you're asking them and they decide, you say, well, are you my dead grandmother? But at the same time, they're spelling out on their end, can I come live with you? Mm -hmm. You say yes. Got you. It's better off staying away from them. It's better off to stay away from them. Um, we have one more question. It says, if one was to avoid all contact from other beings while in the astral realm, you'd never, oh, could they uh, possibly have a uh, I'm sorry. Theory? Stop. <laughs> If I stayed away from the drug dealers <laughs> in the bar, would that make a difference? No. Listen, it's best to stay out of there. It's not meant for those that are living. Seriously. The astral realm in and of itself is a giant place of temptation. I never said it was evil. I said it's a place that we don't belong. It's not for us. Mm -hmm. That's why we have dreams. We have the dream realm. Why can't you go there? Now, I have a question for some people. I've heard this before. Is there a way that you can actually cross over without realizing it when you're in the dream realm to go into the astral realm? What do you mean? That you're in the middle of a dream and wind up projecting. Is that something that's possible? Uh, that that may is possible. And people will be confused yeah. about it? That does happen. Uh, uh, there are two different forms. There's lucid dreaming which is being aware of your dream world and mm -hmm. where you are. And then there's astral, which is leaving your body and mm -hmm. entering into the astral realm. There's a definite difference, so you feel the difference. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> what one should do is concentrate on keeping yourself grounded. If you stay grounded, you stay sealed. In other words, physical activity helps you do that, eating correctly, I've given you all the steps before. Um, if you do that, then your dreams will be your dreams. Mm -hmm. Remember, you don't want to see that light on the other side. You just don't. It's not meant for us to see. Mm -hmm. That's why we have the sun. Okay. If you get to that other side and you see the light, it's going to draw you and you really don't want to be there. Uh, by the way, for those of you that would think that you could escape life by taking your life, no. You put yourself in a very bad place. Mm -hmm. You don't want to be there. Try to make your life different if it's not going well. <clears throat> if you can't, find someone that can help you change your life. There's so many people that are willing to help. Talk to someone. Listen, I, I am not a person that, that condones drug use of any kind of any kind. Stay away from those things. You, what you think is getting high is actually getting low. <laughs> Pretty much. You know, so uh, you can't reach spiritual awareness by using drugs. You know, your spirit really doesn't need any drugs. <laughs> That's very true. Well, I don't know if you realize this, but we're down to four minutes. Okay, I have to take this opportunity to say goodnight to all my homies. <laughs> all of you know who you are. Including, uh, what's Well, that? real quick before you do that, we have one last person. Uh, Shelly wants to know if the year of the dragon is going to be an awesome year. Of course it is. Didn't you ask me that already? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know the answer, so it's nice to know. Yes, the year of the dragon is going to be an awesome year. Which, by the way, is next year, right? Yes, that is 2012. <laughs> 
I said it, 2012. Isn't it funny the movie 2012 came out in 2011? Or... Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, 2012 is going to be great. Make it great. Now, I have to say uh, night night to all my people. That would be Adriana, Bella, Braden, Lexi, Maddie, Cody, Caleb, John, Mackenzie. <laughs> Uh, let's see, have I missed anybody? Oh yeah, uh, Marina. Uh, her name is Marina Nom Nom. <laughs> yes, I was talking about you, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> say goodnight to all of you. Chris. Oh, and Chris, I'm sorry buddy. <laughs> Chris is the herbalist I was talking about. Yes. You know, yeah, he's a very, very intelligent boy. Very, very good boy. Kind of reminds you of Bruce Lee a little bit, <laughs> you know. Uh, and the other kid, Shelly, who asked me a question on Ask the Unicorn that she asked me in person. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and to uh, all of their extended families and all of my extended families and all of everybody's extended families. Oh, and um, let's see, Tina. <laughs> I can't miss Tina. Uh, that would be Tina Brown, so you know who I'm talking about. <laughs> and uh, you have anybody you'd like to say? Just to all my crew, the Alejandros, the Arahitas, hope you have a great holiday. we got Christmas coming up. Oh, yeah. Merry Christmas, and hope everything works out for you guys. Yes, Merry Christmas, beef jerky. <laughs> Happy New Year. <laughs> and yes, I do like Christmas, for those of you that are wondering. Yes. Um, I like them all. I try to celebrate in my own way every single holiday that there is. <clears throat> I just don't have enough time or money. <laughs> <laughs> so, until uh, next week. Uh, this is Orizzi Deliza and Charlie Alejandro. And uh, we'd like to wish you all a wonderful week. And we'll see you next week. Oh, by the way, don't forget to tune in to uh, Ordinary Woman Diamond in the Rough. Or is it Ordinary Woman Mountain Man? Both, yeah. Ordinary yeah. Woman Mountain Man. Okay. And uh, between all of us, I think we can help all of us evolve and grow. Peace. Namaste. <laughs>